Hi there, Elevated Planet community. This is John Drew here. Today, I have the great privilege of interviewing Miguel Mendonca. Miguel has a background in forestry and horticulture, journalism, geography and history, social science and environment. He's worked internationally as a researcher, writer and campaigner on renewable energy before becoming an independent researcher. He then published books on a range of themes, including ETs, hybrids, disclosure, the social history of the UFO topic, wisdom, and the art of creativity. He now makes music full-time as Soccer Miru and has just released his second album titled Into Galactic. Why on earth would humans need weapons? Why would we need fences? Why would we need borders and boundaries? Why would we need to protect ourselves from one another? All these things are crazy to me. Mm -hmm. And I've had multiple experience with angels and ghosts. I've had near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, the sort of lucid dreaming stuff, all kinds of things that have given me the sense that human consciousness, particularly in the West, is very boxed in yeah. by um, religion and science as the two great explanatory mechanisms for us dealing with this, the fact that we're conscious and conscious of all of this stimuli, all of this stuff. And there's no two people who experience it the same way. You know, we're pretty good at, at fear and paranoia and distrust and bigotry and injustice and inequality and feeling this permanent sense of, of threat from other people and that we're in competition with them. And of course, the entire economy builds this in. When I was an environmentalist uh, for a decade. I could not believe the levels of hypocrisy mm. and backbiting. And it just feels like, I don't want to curse on this thing, but we are so screwed up. Competition is fine up to a point and definitely drive innovation. It can produce a lot of great stuff, but not if it is about inequality, right? If, it, mm -hmm. if we were competing to be as benevolent as possible that's a competition i can i can make sense of <laughs> in a way, even though there's maybe an internal paradox so yeah I, I just for my whole life i have i have been studying humans living among the humans i had um a sighting a craft encounter in uh, 09 which was intense and powerful. You know, I see this, this thing that looks like a satellite, except that it's just getting bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter. And then it shrinks back down, carries on, then it expands again, and then poof, just yeah. like a bullet. And these things do change you. And then in that process, talking to the people who self-identify as hybrids, in that first book, I was just struck by how all of it felt so familiar and close to home, and in some cases near the knuckle, to the point where I really was asking myself serious questions about could it be possible that I'm actually not from here? Like I really understand now what the hybrids and, and other folks talk about when they talk about how dense it is on this planet. So you talk about the density that's on the planet. Now, the problem for us is that, you know, when we live our lives within the density, we don't even realize it's dense. And therefore, you've got no sense of perspective. But that's one of the things that, again, in my journey over these last few years, 
it's peeled away these layers and all of a sudden I feel lighter. I feel, you know, endlessly happy. I feel <laughs> joyous about life. I will selectively watch TV, but I'm very careful about what I ingest. I know the uh, University of California in Irvine, they did a, a study recently, which actually scientifically proved that people who subject themselves to this stuff endlessly, it can affect them quite badly. And, and to me, one of the things that I've also learned is that there is, it's kind of this, this deliberately distorted programming and conditioning that we get through life, that we now believe this is our reality. Once you start to realize that you've been programmed and conditioned in a certain way, and you can start to see a different version of reality, then the fear drops away. Where to start? I feel like people do have a tendency to swing too far the other way. Mm -hmm. I feel that there is a real imbalance in the way that people treat the media, that there can be a tendency to absolutism, to say all media is distorted. Like I've met a lot of great journalists, solid people who are trying to do the right thing that I do not believe are controlled in what they do. The media is diverse across the world. I mean, there's plenty of media that is state-owned. You know, we know that there were CIA operations where they had uh, enormous influence in the media. That's public knowledge. The media is not all corrupt. And I mean, for myself, I don't, I don't watch the news, but it's simply because I can't handle it. I just have too much. I'm just too sensitive. That is the reality. Like you were saying, it does damage people. And if you are really empathic and you really want to heal, to help, and you feel so helpless, I mean, what can I do? I mean, I can send money to charities that do good work. I can send donations to Amnesty or to those who are going into war zones to help people. That's what I can do, but what I can't do is, is absorb it because it, it's, for one, it's time, for two, it hurts, for three, it can be paralyzing, and number four, it can block you in a lot of other ways. It can start to drain the color out of life. You, it seems to me, are somebody who may have gone through something similar and has come to a place where you found a means to survive, to thrive, to be happy, and to contribute to more joy, more happiness for people, and to expand people. And that's the opposite of the black holes that people get sucked into, because it, it absorbs all light. That's what happens in a black hole, as we understand it, at least. So to me, the most important thing I can do is to spend time in light and joy and beauty through art. That is where I find levity, humanity, humility. It's where you can set aside ego, you know, your own bullshit and that of other people. And it is more expanding and it's more connecting. Mm. I think if I was to give any human being of any age two pieces of advice for any kind of happiness it would be to spend time in nature even if it's looking out a window and taking in something of the natural world and to be creative even if it's doodling during a phone call anything that you can do in these regards i think can help you to be more balanced and spending all your time reposting memes on facebook is just not going to get the job done no and it's interesting like the um in terms of getting in touch with nature that's something that keeps coming through to me as well but there also was the the importance of actually connecting with nature and literally feet on the ground touching nature hug a tree it is a deeper connection I mean, looking out the window, if that's what you got, then that's what you got, right? And, and you, let's face it, you and I both live in England. The weather doesn't always play ball to make you want to go skipping across the field and hug a tree. So you've got to have a balance to everything. But, but it was interesting because the idea is the earth energy coming through you. And it, it, the Gaia Mother Earth, the living, breathing planet, is there providing you with kind of energy that helps you to be balanced. That's part of the, the things that I'd never realized. 
And you, you mentioned much earlier about competition. I lived and worked in America for over a decade. And one of the things that amazed me, well, didn't amaze me, but it's one of the things I learned about the culture there. So super competitive. I always used to think the UK and Europe had that. And we do. We definitely do. It's the westernized kind of version of reality. But in America, it's kind of like everybody is like life is a competition. This is kind of part of what you got. To, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. There's an awful lot of losers over there who have very little, but there's also a lot of winners. It just seems so distorted. And this materialism kind of thing, I think it's always a balance, right? There's, there's a spiritual part of life. There's a material part of life. And there is a balance to achieve between the two. Because if you go to one extreme, if you're so steeped in spirituality that you forget about everything, the fact is we're here in this physical incarnation for a reason. And part of that is to, to go through this material aspect of life, as well as, you know, learning who we really are, right? That we are far, part of something far bigger. We are part of something. We're here to experience this and to, to kind of work our way through. And also, this is one of the things that always amazed me. I got this uh, Soul's Gift book going back about three years, years ago, four years ago. And I love that. The life planning that goes on before we come here, before we are born into these bodies and we have the instant amnesia from which we have to then uncover everything as we go through life. The fact is we have a plan before we come here. Now, that's something that always intrigued me. And again, it, it's kind of one of these things that sounds very fantastical, but I'm convinced that part of my life path was to do what I'm doing now. It took me 58 years before I even started to uncover this, almost 58 years. I mean, this is crazy. So that's why I respect people's <laughs> right to uh, look at this as deluded nonsense, because I lived in that world for so many decades. It took me an awful long time to get where I'm getting now. But there is, it's a magnificent thing. What would your thoughts be around that kind of thing? I mean, you're here for a reason, right? You doubtless, you, you, your past lives, your entities or whatever have been out in the stars. And I know that you've had information and been given information specifically around that as well. How do you feel about your incarnation here on the planet and your reason for being here? Well, um, sometimes it feels like a, uh, a crazy error or or a bet or something. You know, the image that I have is that I was at some bar on some planet. I mean, picture the cantina scene in Star Wars, right? I, I think we all kind of go there. And I imagine having a drink with some being from somewhere and we're swapping just crazy stories of places we've been. And he just, you know, at one point he just leans back and he said, buddy, I can top anything. I can top any story. If you want nuts, if you want polarity, if you want intense, there's only one place to go. And we'll meet back here in a hundred years and you tell me how that went down. And I'm like, I'm game. I'm there. Don't tell me. It's like movies. I'm like, don't tell me anything about it. Give me a title and I'll sit down and I'll watch it. And I feel like that's what's going on. That uh, I, I had no idea what I was in for. No. Um, but I do certainly believe that that's how it works, that there is a level of intention in our incarnations that we do have some sovereignty some agency some awareness of at least the experience we're looking for mm. i don't know that i really buy the whole karmic thing there's definitely a variety of interpretations of what karma is but i do not feel trapped here put it that way i feel like i can come and go as i please i can do what i like because I self-identify as a wanderer through certain experiences, that seems to me solid, that that is my nature. Every part of it makes sense. Like people have said, oh, I think you're a hybrid. I don't self-identify that way. People have thrown a lot of things at me because everyone comes through their, you know, their own filter, mm -hmm. you know, the filter of their own experience, outlook, their nomenclature, um, whatever it is. But I don't pin myself to any place or, or race or any of that. I just feel like I go where my curiosity takes me. Mm. And, and this is a pretty curious place, for mm. sure. So 
to put in in maybe a wider context my previous statements about how it does my head in the way that people treat information and and effectively the way they treat reality here in the wider context if we all choose then we're all choosing to come here and kind of be crazy together and to try and puzzle things out to make it in a place like this you know there's that line in uh, new york new york if you can make it here you can make it anywhere Right. You know, that suddenly comes to mind and actually from the scene in as good as it gets where jack nicholson is putting the dog down the um, garbage chute and saying that to the dog <laughs> um yeah i mean this yeah it's a madhouse it's it's crazy but yes. i mean you'll find things here that will i mean the kindness in people every day uh, at some point i'll get misty or teary by just some act of kindness Mm -hmm. I, I witness somewhere in the world and I just think that the best of humanity is an absolutely awe-inspiring thing mm -hmm. the level of courage bravery the will that people have to help others to put them their own lives in danger relentlessly in whatever means that is whatever form that takes the humor that people have I mean, that is how I survive, you know, art and humour. I make sure to watch at least an hour of comedy every day before bed. Yeah. You know, my favourite people that I've met are the ones that make me laugh the most, I think, in general. And there's nothing I like better than getting taken to that place of just losing it, at yeah. whatever it is. And, you know, the, the comedians that I really love, I mean, a lot of them are very political and they were going places that were opening people's eyes. I mean, Bill Hicks was huge. I mean, he was really blowing up at the time I was kind of coming of age. So that was one means to sort of open the minds. And then, of course, I discovered Monty Python when I was like 13, something like that. And myself and one other kid in school had seen it. And the next morning we came in and we're like, oh, my God, did you see that show last night? Monty Python's Flying Circus. Mm. It, it was so mind blowing because these people were messing with reality in the most incredible way and finding the absurdities of life. <laughs> and, it, and it didn't even need to be on the nose satirizing yeah. just they were showing you how crazy the things are that we take for granted 